Okay, we're starting here on project 13. And so I'm going to be going through the video guide, the instructions here, and talking a little bit about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Also, I'll be showing because one of the things is some people in class asked me how I was able to get the data in so quickly, when you all know I'm a really slow typist. And we're going to go through that too. What we're looking at here is the time value of money and how money grows and how it compounds. And we're looking, we're comparing two things. One is called simple interest. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm on page number 58 in the PDF file. Okay. And in simple interest, we're taught it's a method of calculating the interest. It simply multiplies the principal, the amount you deposited, by the annual, meaning yearly, interest rate, and then multiplying that by the number of years. Okay, this is a very simple way of doing it, and it's not actually the way it's normally done. Normally, we use compound interest, and what that does is it applies the interest not only to the principal, but also to the accumulated interest, and I'm going to be showing you how that works in just a few minutes. So the scenario here is you saved $1,000 and plan to invest in a simple interest account or a compound interest account. The simple interest account earns 10% interest every year, while the compound interest account earns 8%, so it earns a lower percentage. You want to determine which interest rate will make you more money with the same deposit amount. So you decide to create a spreadsheet that calculates how much your money will grow for a period of 10 years. Okay, and so we're starting here on page number 58, and basically the first thing it tells us to do is to go ahead and open this page, and to remind you, you have this page is, if I can scroll down here and find it, right here, project number 13, okay, and you'll just go ahead and open it. You'll notice I didn't give you anything to copy on this one. And I'll just tell you the reason I didn't give you anything to copy is because there's so little to type in this one. This one's really easy, but do remember to open, and this is the one you need to be working on. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and open that. It's the wrong one. Go ahead and close that one. So the next place I'm going to go to is page numbers. Give me a moment. Next page. Next page. Come on, 61. Good, page number 61. And that's showing us what we're going to type in here. You're probably just going to be watching and copying it over. So I'm going to put in the principal. And test cell alpha 1, tab key. And 1,000. 1. Enter. Annual interest rate. Hey, tab key. And yes, I do see I made a mistake there. Shift tab. And remember, if you made a mistake, you need to edit it up here, okay? A-N-N-U-A-L. U-U-A-L. Oh, it doesn't make it. It wasn't that big. Okay. Now, again, I'm just going to press the tab key. That's going to move me into this cell here. And when I start typing, it's going to go over this. Don't panic. What it's That's not gone. Uh, 10%. Remember, percent's a shifted 5 there. Enter, enter, enter. Now I'm there. Year. Tab key. Beginning balance. Tab key. Simple interest term. Tab key. Beginning balance. Enter. One, enter. Two, enter. Done. That's all you need to type in. Okay. We're done typing for a few minutes. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the column width because it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Yeah, I do see that. You know what? I did that once before too. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click right here on the letter A. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click directly on the letter D. You can move the cursor here and drag over. I don't actually do it very often. I normally use the shift key, and I'll tell you why. Because when dragging around these columns, it's very easy to accidentally get an edge with that hand there and move your columns around accidentally. Okay, so I've, I've selected from alpha to delta. I'm going to go ahead and right click there. Anywhere up here is fine. Resize columns A through D, fit to data. Okay, good. Now, this is kind of ugly right here. We might as well just fix this right now. So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to come over here to alignment. And, yeah. Otherwise, it just looks really ugly to have something over there. It just doesn't work. Okay, 
The next thing we're going to do, you notice I didn't type in some things that are in the book. The next thing I'm going to do is select cells alpha 5 and alpha 6. I'm going to move the cursor to the center. Now, this is a problem a lot of students are still having. Don't try to get right on the edge. You're trying for the center. Press and hold the left mouse button down, drag down until your cursor's in the center of alpha 6 and release. Now we're going to go to the autofill box. The autofill box is this little tiny blue box right here. And I'm going to move my cursor over. It's going to turn to a cross. And somebody asked about the use of the word cross. One line is crossing the other. It is a cross. Okay, now I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down. The and I'm going to pull down until that cursor is in the center of alpha 14. And I'm going to release. And it's going to autofill all those in for me. Okay, now here's a place where the book actually goes wrong, and I don't like what they did because they did it wrong. So I want you to click in cell B5. You see where I'm at, and type equals and B2, uh, B1. Okay, I'll tell you how I normally do this, just to tell why I was looking and trying to figure out what cell it was, because normally what I will do is instead of typing in B1, you can do that is I will just come up here and click on that cell. And you see that it put it in there for me. I'm going to hit enter. Now, here's the thing. Do not accept the autofill. Okay, don't accept the autofill suggestion because uh, that's, again, wrong. So equals B1. Now, the reason this is more correct is because if you came in later and wanted to change your assumptions, you only have to change them here. You don't have to go looking into your spread into your spreadsheet to figure out where you need to make changes. It simply is more correct. You should not hard key in numbers into a spreadsheet. Uh, you, uh, what I should say is really hard key in variables, uh, but that's getting a little bit harder. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this sheet. You're used to seeing these things that say sheet one, just say sheet one. We want to change that name. So I'm going to come down here, put my cursor over sheet one. I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in simple interest. Okay, and hit enter. So we've named this tab Simple Interest. There's a reason we're doing it, and we're going to go back to that later. So don't assume that it's pointless. Now I'm going to come up here and click on cell B1. I'm going to change it to currency, and that's right here. If you didn't have the dollar sign there, you do. But if you didn't, you come up here to Format, you go to Number, and you'd select Currency, and it's the exact same thing, okay? So I'm just clicking over here to get out of that, clicking on B1. Click on the dollar sign. Now, they want it shown with no decimal places, the .00. They don't want that. So that's these numbers up here, decreased decimal places, increased decimal places. Now, if you accidentally click and say, oh, no, I have more decimal places now, wrong one. Click on the other one. Click, click. Now it's click, click, click. Now, you notice that because I linked these two cells, okay, as you change this cell, you're automatically changing this cell. Again, doing it right actually makes it easier to do. Okay, the next thing we're doing is selecting cell Charlie 5. Now, uh, we're going to be using some dollar sign symbols here. The dollar sign is a shifted four on your keyboard. I will explain in a few minutes exactly what it's doing. Right now, you just need to do it and, ex and just accept that I'm going to explain it in about 10 minutes. Okay, so equals, ignore what it put there. Okay, so we're just going to go dollar sign, B, dollar sign, one, times. When I say times, that's the little star there. I'll no longer call it a star. I'm going to call it an asterisk, okay? And it's so it's an asterisk, and you can see it directly above the 9 on the number pad or a shifted 8 on your keyboard. So far, we have dollar sign B, dollar sign 1, times dollar sign B, dollar sign 2. Oops, 2. Now, you'll notice as you're typing these in, it's going to apply colors to them, and it's going to show that color on your spreadsheet. That's a great debugging tool. If things aren't working, it makes it very easy to find the cells being referenced in your formulas. Now that you've got all that keyed in, just hit tab. That's going to take you over to this side here, and we're going to put in a very simple formula, equals... That's don't don't accept that formula because we're not doing that. You're going to come over here and put in B5. You'll notice that I simply click in B5. You can type in B5, doesn't matter. Plus C5. Enter. 
Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to make one more formula change in here. Equals delta 5. Enter. Okay, that's what we're doing so far. Now, the next thing we're going to do is start using autofill to finish this up. So we're not typing in all of the formulas, okay? So we're going to come over here to the center of Charlie 5, drag over to the center of Delta 5. Again, notice that I'm in the center as I do this. Now I'm going to go to the autofill button, little blue box right there, press and hold. I'm just going down to Delta 6 and release. Good. There's no way to do this without making two autofill selections, so I do it in this direction. Now I'm going to go to the center of Bravo 6, press and hold, Delta to the center of Delta 6, just like this. Go to the autofill button, press and hold, all the way down to Delta 14, and release. And it's going to do all of that for you automatically. So the next thing we're going to do here is step number 14 in cell B16. We're just going to type in the word total. And again, let's go ahead and align this one over to this side. It's simply going to look a little bit better. And here, we're going to add up all of these right here, okay? All of the interest earned. So equals and stop. Now, if this works right for you, you see sum Charlie 4 through that, that little two dots there is a colon, and that's a shifted character to the immediate right of the letter L. It's the two dots. It's called a colon. That, and so in their spreadsheet, you'll hear people say through instead of colon. Okay, C4 through C14, and you can see the selection here. Okay, yeah, it selected this word here, but in this case, it's not going to apply a numerical value to those letters, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, just go ahead and press tab. Okay, now I want to format this so it looks like these up here. I'm going to click right about there. Actually, it doesn't matter where I click, to be honest. And I'm going to click on the format painter right here. We used the format painter in the previous class. And you notice there's sort of a dotted line around that because it's going to be using it, and I'm going to come over here and click on this. Now, the only other thing the instructions say to do is to increase that to two decimal places. And you saw what I did there. So this one is now done. So let's go ahead and start on the next sheet. We're going to create a new worksheet. This is something we haven't done before. You see the plus sign down here. And if I float over it just right, it says add sheet. Go ahead and click on that. You see that it says sheet two. Yeah, I am going a bit fast because I figure it's a video. You can stop and go back if I'm, you know, being slow or if I'm being too fast. Compound interest. You're going to name this compound interest. Enter. I did. I got to that by double clicking on that, as you know. Okay. Now, because again, I don't really feel like doing more work than I have to. I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to select from alpha one down here to this cell right here, to delta 6. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. I could have come up here, pressed the left mouse button down, and drug carefully to delta 6. That would have worked. The other thing I can do is click on alpha 1, hold the shift key down, and click on delta 6. That works too. Either way works. Just like you can press control C, you can right click and select copy, you can come up here to edit and select copy. It honestly doesn't matter. It's all control C, okay? Compound interest, click here, control V. Okay, let's go ahead and adjust our column widths. Don't adjust your column widths while it's sitting here like this. That's not going to work right for you. I have to just click somewhere to get out of that mode. And then I'm going to come up here to A, hold the shift key down, click on the D, right click, and resize columns, fit to data. Okay, good. Okay, so that part's done. We're going to make a little change here where it says interest rate. I'm going to click there, and I'm just going to press 8, enter. Now, if you put in 8% or something, you may have two percentage signs. If you do, you'll get an error here, and I'm going to purposely do that, by the way. 8%, enter. See, you'll get, an, you'll get some errors, and that'll tell you that you did something wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and click in this. Remember, we edit a cell up here in the formula bar. So I'm just going to get rid of one of those 2% signs, enter. So if you have that happen, that's what went wrong. Not a big deal. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is get rid of our formulas here. So I'm going to come right here, press and hold the left mouse button down, drag to there, and press backspace. Okay, good. 
And I want to change this one here to say compound. And enter. Okay, and it looks like I need to adjust the column width again. You can see that it's cut off again. So I'm just going to move to here between the C and the D. You see how that bar appears when I'm in the two-pointed arrow? And I'll double-click. Good. All done. Okay, there will be some differences this time, just letting you know. Okay, so coming over here, use autofill to complete. Now we're going to click in cell C5, and this is the first place you're going to see a difference. Equals. And here you're just going to put in B5 right here. And you notice I just clicked on it. Times dollar sign B dollar sign 2 tab. Okay. So we actually have less this time, but let's wait and see what happens here. It's going to again be equals. It's going to click on this one plus. So B5 plus C5, enter. And now I'm going to come over here to these two here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to autofill down one row. Oops, you know what I forgot to do? forgot to do this. Okay, so again, I'm going to select these two right here. Go to the autofill button, come down to the center of 14. There we go. Now, I just click somewhere at random, doesn't matter where. Now I'm going to go ahead and select B6 through D6. I did it that time by clicking and holding the shift key and clicking in the other. Uh, if you're having trouble select, you know, selecting cells that way, you might try using the shift key approach. Now I'm going to go to the autofill button right here. Press and hold the left mouse button down. Drag all the way down to the center of delta 14 again. And release. Okay, you can see some differences going on here, though. So on this one, it was 100 all the way down. Okay. Here, it just keeps adding up total. So you can put in total here. Okay, tab. And again, I don't like that over there. It just looks crummy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move that over to that side. Good. And here, again, we're going to go equals and stop. Now, if this says sum C5 colon C14, great. We're just going to press tab. Great. And now we only have one more thing to do, and that's already formatted in dollars. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to add those two decimal places. And that's the reason they wanted you to add two decimal places, so you could see that in this case, it's actually calculating a lot of others a, a lot more precisely. Okay. Now the final step in the in this lesson is this: we're going to come over here and make one more sheet. Okay. We're going to name this sheet analysis. A-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S, -I -S, enter. Now we're going to merge cells alpha 1 to echo 1. So I'm going to click here in cell alpha 1. I'm going to hold the shift key down, click in echo 1. Just to tell you, you could have also moved the cursor to the center of cell alpha 1, pressed and held, and drug over to echo 1. does not matter which one you use. Now I'm going to use the merge tool right here, merge cells, and I'm going to click there. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here between A1 and A2. You see where I'm at? You see that up and down arrow. I'm going to press and hold the left bounce button down and pull down about an inch or so. Okay. Next, this cell is still selected. It's still got that blue border around it. We're going to turn on word wrapping. Format. Text. Oops, wrong. Wrapping. Wrap. Okay. Now, I'm not going to show you an example here simply because I don't want everybody copying my example. And so what I what you're going to do in this question with this right here is you're going to explain which one you would choose, compound or simple interest and why. OK, I can think of a few possible answers. So there so there's a couple of, like I say, possible endings for this one now. When you're all done, there's one last thing I'd like you to do here, just real quick. And if you did it right, this is going to work easy. If you simply sat there copying my numbers down and not using formulas, first off, what you just did was a lot harder. Second of all, you have to do it again because it's um, the way I'm having you do it is easier. Originally, spreadsheets were called what-if engines, okay? What if instead of 8%, we got 10 Enter. You notice it rippled all through the spreadsheet the moment you hit enter. So it redid all of those calculations. I mean, you could say, well, what if I put in 1,200? 
And again, it's going to redo all of those calculations for you very quickly. When you turn it in, I want it to say 1,010% here. 1,000 here, 10% here. Okay. And so here we've got this one here at 10%. And you can see that the total in 10 years at 10% with simple interest was $1,000. Because every year it's simply multiplying the interest by the principal. The compound interest, on the other hand, is multiplying the interest by this number over here. So each year it goes up. Now, there's one last thing I wanted to show you guys, which was why we used the dollar sign. As you can see, I've just clicked on cell Charlie 6, and I'm going to click up here, and you notice that what's going on here is it's, getting, it's looking at two cells. It's looking at this cell right here, and it's looking at this cell right here. Now, the very next year, I want it to look at this next year. I want to look at this cell. I still want it to look at this cell. Now, when you're in this mode, you hit escape first. Escape. Click somewhere else. Good. And now I'm going to come down to the next one. Notice that this number here without the dollar signs is incrementing. The number with the dollar signs is not incrementing. Escape. Okay. So each time I do this, if you look up there, B7 times times uh, string B string 2, um, the dollar sign is many times refer called string. First off, it's easier to say than dollar sign. Second of all, it has a particular meaning in programming, okay? Just to let you know. Okay, so you now here we wouldn't say string. Here we would say $133. The dollar sign calling it that is only in programming, okay? So anyways, uh, Bravo 7 times, and it's still using this number here. Click here. Bravo eight times. So the number here is incrementing, increasing by one every time we come down. That's simply how autofill works. And that makes autofill extremely useful. But there are those times you don't want the number to increment, such as right here, you want it to stay on this 10%. And so you make an absolute reference. Okay, that's a vocab word there. Absolute reference. And to make an absolute reference, you use the dollar signs. And that tells the program that you don't want that number to increment. Each time, the other one is incrementing, but this one is always staying the same. And that's what the dollar sign is doing for you. Okay, remember to get this turned in when you're done.